So let's take a look at your blind spot, our blind spot. What others know that you do not? You know, top organizations and people want to work on their blind spot. No, why does it matter? What does it mean? Because if you understand the things that you need to work on, I need to work on, you become better. I don't understand, if you look at the model, I'm going to show you why people don't want to discuss this. It, it, it comes down to one of two things. They just don't want to do any self-reflection. Ego. Um, because if, you, if I went into your company and said, what does so-and-so like to work with me? And, and, and you said, I don't want anybody to know why I'm right. I'm really grumpy anymore. You don't think they know that now? I mean, come on. They probably still deal with you. I mean, I'm a little abrupt and to the point. Oh, is that a shocker if they work with you for 10 years? So then why not? Why instead of like the where, and I used to have this speech, the where, the blind spot, why not embrace who you are and say, what can I learn to do better so I can get better at that? Um, you know, if, if you're backing your car up and, and you're, let me just show you what a blind spot means. I'm not going to, in lieu of time, I'm not going to go through all this. This is what is not known to self, but what is known to others, okay? There's four quadrants of it, public, private, unknown, blind. But what's not known to self, but what is known to others. If you're backing your car up, and your neighbors are in the cul-de-sac, and you're the person that never is wrong and doesn't ever want to be pointing anything out to, and you know those people, and they see you slowly inching backing towards your mailbox, and they're like, and you hit your mailbox, they're like, oh, you got, did you guys see I was going to hit that? Like, oh, everybody saw you were going to hit that. What did you tell me? You, did you really want to know? That's the blind spot. That is a huge growth opportunity. It's like, again, I, I, and I, I'm not going to be able to give all this justice in the middle of time, but that's a, that's a whole chapter in the book as well. All right, communications uh, competence. In, in our communication cycle, as communicators, as business people, as salespeople, as trying to dif differentiate, we have degrees of consciousness. Uh, and, and the first stage is we're, we're unconsciously incompetent. What does that mean? We don't know what we don't know, and we're not even that good at it. So let's go back to drive. We are 16, we get our driver's license, we start driving. We, we don't, we're not good beyond having a license. And we don't even know we're not good. Until we get to stage two, we're now aware once we've had a fender bender and got the speeding ticket and our parents have said, one more and you're done. And you're like, okay, I'm still not that good, but I'm aware I'm not that good. Slow down, give some room, for goodness sakes, put the speed, whatever the thing is, speed control. But, you know, third stage is moving around consciously competent. This isn't a bad stage, by the way. You're now aware, and you're pretty good at it. And this is, think in terms of your business. Let me show you the fourth stage. I'm going to come back to the third. There are four stages, like autopilot, when I go rent a car. I have a rental car in this garage. I don't go into it and go, hmm, first, I'm going to take this ignition key, stick it in, I'm going to turn it sharply right. No. Put it in, put it out, merge spray. Now I'm going to look for the headlights, I'm going to look for the windshield wipers, I'm going to look where to turn, open the gas tank, you know that. But that's about it. But the danger of that is overconfidence. That's, this is my own thing, this is an academic model that I, 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 I work from. Because here, stage four, you could have somebody go, I've done this 25 years, there's nothing you can tell me that I haven't seen. Like, really? If you're not a continual learner, you're being I promise you, I learned something every day. What I was telling you earlier about that brand external versus culture internal, those are both passion areas of mine that I study, work on, consult in, read in, and have a year and a half doctoral work in, and it never clicked to me until the other day when I was reading Kellogg's book on marketing. It's Kellogg's uh, University, one of the great marketers. And, and, it, and, it, and I'm like, God, I never even thought about it that way. Your brand internal, if it's lived out, is the same as the, on the culture side and the flip flop. If you're not continually learning, we're not, what are you doing? Just, I know everything. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know like Twitter, or is it Twitter? You know, I don't know that. So think about what you are in your, your, your confidence level. Because research backs stuff, you're either moving forward or going back. You can't stay the same. I mean, it's like if you're on an exercise diet, start the new year strong, you're trying to move backwards, lose some weight, get in shape. Or you say, I don't care, I'm going to eat whatever I want, I'm probably going forward. Most likely, it's hard to stay the same without hard work. Um, so I challenge you to not, sorry that's cutting off, it's just the way I'm going, but don't simply be goal-oriented, big on goals, but be growth-oriented. 
That means that when you set a goal, that you don't just stop and say, okay, well, I read that book you said. Okay, well, but you've got to keep growing. So let me give you an example. Everybody stretch their arm like each other. Now really stretch. And everybody went up about three inches. And that's where the, oh, you don't understand. That's just what I'm working my tail, really. Because everybody will stretch a little bit further. That's what you got to be thinking. Be thinking about where you are, your blind spots, your confidence.